in this lecture, I want to talk about idea killers because I want us to guard ourselves against idea killers. Okay, let's read this particular quote. It says this, a new idea is delicate. It can be killed by a snare or a yawn. It can be stabbed to death by a quip and worried to death by a frown on the right man's brow. Charles Brower. So now, ideas are delicate. That's very true. And this particular quote relates to what other people can do to your idea. But in this particular lecture, I want to talk about what you can do to kill your ideas. Things that can originate from within you that are able to ruin your ideas before they are even birthed. So I want to talk about them now so that you can guide yourself against it. Unbelief is number one. Number one is unbelief. Unbelief says, if it was a good idea, it won't come to me. <laughs> That's unbelief. If it was a good idea, it won't come to me. So it can only be a rubbish idea. Every idea I get is rubbish. You know, I know I said in another video that it's all, all ideas you get that are good and are workable. That's very true. I remember I also said that there are ideas in you right now that are able to make you very successful. Okay? Sometimes when somebody has been to the school of hard knocks, it is easy for them to think no good idea comes to them. That's not true. You must resist that thought or those thoughts that tell you that if an idea comes, it must be a rubbish idea. No, it's not true. You've got to fight it. You've got to resist it. You've got to say no. You've got to say no out loud if you have to. You've got to repeat things like, good ideas come to me. Good ideas come to me. I have wonderful ideas to counteract the unbelief that comes to your mind. The second idea killer that you need to watch out for is lack of confidence. Lack of confidence can keep you from starting. Actually, the only way to get confidence is to start acting. Oh, let me say this. When I, when I was teaching on um, public speaking, the reason why people don't speak in public is because whenever they have the opportunity to speak in public, they simply don't take that opportunity. The more you reject the opportunity to speak in public, the less skillful you become in speaking in public, and so you never do any public speaking. And so you never develop the confidence or what is required to actually be an excellent public speaker. It's that simple. You've got to get up and start doing something. If you have an idea and you do not pursue that idea, it's not going to help you develop confidence. Confidence comes from your ability to do. And another thing is, another area to, to watch out for is that uh, the reason why people don't have confidence, they say, well, I don't have the ability. Nobody knows everything before you start. You have to start that business. You have to start walking down the road. That's what we called corridors of opportunity okay you start walking down that corridor then opportunities are the doors that open to you if you don't walk down that corridor no opportunities are going to open to you so the point is to get confidence you've got to act you've got to know that whatever you are lacking you can learn and if you cannot learn it, there's always somebody else who knows what you don't know that is willing to help you to move yourself forward. So that should not stop you from moving on with your idea. The third area is fear. Just fear. Fear of what people will say. Fear of what my family will say. Fear of how I'm feeling. <laughs> Every kind of fear. Whenever you have an idea and you're thinking about starting your business in particular you're going to have an amount of fear it's normal what's abnormal is to allow the fear to incapacitate you that is abnormal fear will be present you you know you might think oh i don't know whether it's going to work yeah that's true but remember this remember this is really important People also fear, fear of failure. What if I start and it fails? Well, hang on a minute. I learned something once and I forgot to actually said it. It's a very good saying and I'm going to say it to you. It says this, it says, 
a failure is like fertilizers. They stink, but they make things grow. Failure is like fertilizers. They stink, but they make things grow. Now, here's the deal. If you don't fail at something, you are not going to succeed. Okay, let me be honest with you. I've listened to so many millionaires and some billionaires and they will always say something which is very crucial. Nine out of ten of their ideas failed. One worked. And the one that worked made up for the ten that failed. Look at venture capitalists and understand how they function. They know that most of the investments will not work. But there will be one that would work that will make up for the others that failed. That's life. The, as you fail, you learn. Sometimes it takes about 10 ideas, 10 businesses to get there. When you get there, you know and you do it. But if you don't start today, it will never happen. Success will not come by sitting at home. Don't let fear keep your ideas down. Don't let it kill your idea. Just overcome it. Finally, misunderstanding risk. Misunderstanding risk. A lot of people think risk is like gambling. Risk is not like gambling <laughs> at all. Somebody said, well, I'll go put some money on that GG and if, it, if, the, if the horse comes in, then I'll, I'll make some money. Or oh, I'm taking risk. That is gambling. That's not risk. The kind of risk we're talking about that we're going to outline in this process of uh, idea to launch is about you following calculated risk, researched risk, knowing what may happen, mitigating or developing uh, uh, strategies that will help to mitigate the, the risks that you face in business. That's what I'm that's what we're going to be talking about in this particular course. We're talking about some pie in the sky, you know, kind of risk taking that has no substance to it. But let me say this finally. And people tend to forget this. I want to remind you of this. The biggest risk you can take is the risk of doing nothing. Let me say that again. The biggest risk you can take is the risk of doing nothing. So, taking a risk, taking a calculated risk is a good thing. And it's got to happen that way. But sitting down and doing nothing is the biggest risk that, be, that brings the biggest, the, the biggest regret with it if you sit and do nothing with the ideas that you have. All I want to say to you really is take action today.